I seriously have never seen this anywhere, anywhere else in, in stories of people's success that go public, right? This is something that is, is real eye opener if you catch it. There's this great movie, a movie about success. It's called Whiplash. And most people, if you're, if you're coming from any kind of victim mindset, that movie will bring out your victim mindset. There's no question about it because it's about extraordinary success. It's about a person who's determined to become the best. Um, but there is a line in the movie that I think sums it up perfectly. I'm not gonna tell you what it is. You get the movie and watch it. And if you think you know the line, you can post it in the Facebook group and I will let you know when you find it. So it's a bit of a challenge. However, I, here's the thing though, here's the thing. Because tell, it's like the secret inside of, inside of Think and Grow Rich. If somebody tells you what the secret is, it really is no, no benefit to you. When your awareness comes up to the level where you go, oh shit, that's it right there. That's the whole thing. That's, that epitomizes everything right there. You know you've got it at least intellectually, you know, you've got it. Um, yeah, so what we're looking for is that there's a movie called Whiplash. It epitomizes what a person is going through to reach, to be the, become the best, like a person wants to be the best at something in the world, right? And what I have found out about, what I have found with this movie is that it really brings out where you are in your growth as to what you see in this movie. Okay, now I want you to think about this because I watch all the time really, really great people quit when they're so close. I mean, when, when Hill talks about three feet from gold in, in Think and Grow Rich, like Steph and, and, and uh, anybody on my team, Liz, Sarah, they'll all tell you, they see it too. People are so damn close sometimes and then they quit because as the closer you get to the big breakthrough, the bigger the obstacle is. You might wanna write that down. The closer you get to the breakthrough, the bigger the obstacle is. I see this with people when they're, go, when they're working on going over a million, it's like, Go, it's, it, for them, it's like going up a hill. And that last 10, or as, as I say, that last 10,000, right, is almost like straight up the first time a person does it usually. And when they get to that place, they're exhausted. And they've got all kinds of problems happening because their subconscious is screaming to try to find a way to get them to agree with something to stop. And, and we've seen so many people do it. They get so convinced that they have to pay attention to the problem and quit, they quit. And once a person does that, it's over. Like nobody's gonna convince them. They've already made up their mind that they're done. And it's very unfortunate because you have to start over from that point. Because you're going all the way back. Once you quit, you're going all the way back down the mountain, all the way back. And then you have to go all the way back up again. And you have to fight the same demons over again. When you, when you concede to one demon, you then lose all the strength that you built on the ones prior to it. Because you question your faith. You question what's real. You question what's true. It takes an extraordinary effort not to make a million, not to make 10 million, not to build a business. It takes an extraordinary effort to battle the demon in your mind that's trying to stop you. And that demon really is mediocrity. It's believing in all the conditioned lies that uh, the world tells us. It's so, one, of the, one of the most bizarre things to me is that once a person gets on the other side, all of a sudden it becomes easy. Now, nothing changes. It's the same damn business. It's the same damn strategy. 
but it becomes easy. Why? Because the de- you find out that demon that's in your head is not real. The lie loses its strength. And yet it's there with every time every time that we grow. It's never the out, it's never the outside circumstance. He'll kind of address this. Well, he addressed this several different ways, but I like I like this one. He says, spasmodic or occasional effort to apply the rules will be of no value to you. To get results, you must apply all of the rules until their application becomes a fixed habit with you. In no other way can you develop the necessary money consciousness. Poverty is attracted to whose mind is favorable to it, as money is attracted to him whose mind has been deliberately prepared to attract it. And through the same laws, poverty consciousness will voluntarily seize the mind which is not occupied with a money consciousness. A poverty consciousness develops without conscious application of habits favorable to it. The money consciousness must be created to order unless one is born with such a consciousness. And that's 100% true. So in order, to, like the, the, the foundation of that is I will not be denied. No matter what shows up, you have to be coming from the place of, I will not be denied. You don't need to know how you're going to overcome the obstacle, but you can't back down from it. If at any point the fear becomes bigger, brighter, more suggestive in nature, then the dream that you want, it's done. It's done. I will not be denied. You have to become bigger than your own fear. And remember, your own fear is, is, is brought up inside of you by external suggestion. You don't have the money. The client went away. The car broke down. There's problems in the marriage. Somebody's sick. Uh, Unexpected bills show up that are that are huge in your in your business. You didn't know something, ignorance, and then you made a mistake, and now it's going to cost you. You lost an employee. COVID happened. Like it's an external thing triggering an internal process, and it's at that moment that you have to gather your tools that you've been learning. I will not be denied. I don't need to know how. I just need to know that I'm going to continue moving forward. The I will not be denied is something that you have to, like if you were going into, uh, if you were going into battle, if you were going into war, if you were going into the jungle, you would look at what are the most important tools and weapons that I need in this moment? You're, You're like, everything is not necessary. But the things that are necessary that will save your life or help you fend off some kind of attack, those things have to be kept out, ready, and and in good working order. The, The tools that you use for your mind are the same thing. I you never know. I mean, just think about your life. I'm not telling you something you don't know. You never know when you wake up in the morning what obstacle is going to hit you, what challenge, what problem. But you know it happens. To continue to move through life and not prepare yourself to be able to move through those things without without having it destroy what you've already created or shatter the way that you're thinking is really foolish. That's not being a good steward of your own process. Because we know it. We know it's going to happen. That's life. That's life. We know that if we set a goal, it's going to get hard at some point. And our mind is going to have to push through before our body, before our skill set, before we make the call, before we step on the stage, before we write the script, whatever it is that you're doing. 
Your mind, your thinking is what takes you through that hard time, nothing else. I will not be denied. Thanks for listening to the Successful Mind Podcast. And if you like what you heard and you want to know more, go to davidnagel.com forward slash free stuff.